Margaret Sanger in the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, 60s, on record in public letters uh, with the Rockefeller Foundation saying we've got to pose as liberals, get the black leaders in place so we can abort most of them, and they've been successful. 51% of blacks never make it out of utero. They're murdered in the womb. Uh, so they did that, and they talk about uh, controlling black leaders by financing them. So we know that that's their strategic plan. And, and Martin Luther King got off the reservation, so they took him out. Well, absolutely. And um, so you look back in 1960, and uh, it, is it beyond the pale to consider the fact that they may have wanted to groom somebody from the, a very early age, like a baby, uh, uh, you know, you've got his parents and his grandparents basically in their pocket. And then you've got this stuff about behavioral science work at the University of Hawaii. Uh, there's just so many gaps in the histories of not only uh, the president, but also uh, his mother, uh, his father, uh, his, his grandfather, and his grand grandmother on his mother's side. So um, when you see gaps like that, now you, you can look at any other president. We those families we knew way too much. My God, Roger Clinton, uh, Billy Carter. But in this case, we have these significant gaps uh, in their histories. And, and I think that's something that people should be concerned about. Wayne, I think that's the key that you just hit on. You have all this effort to cover up the past. You've got CIA connections uh, to your left, your right, forward and backwards at every level. Uh, you have got uh, the fact that they've spent so much time, not just in the present, but going back decades covering up his true providence uh, and, and where he comes from. And, and, and then, as you said, all these intelligence and corporate uh, intelligence and foundation connections. And now he's the president. And we know they had these programs to go in, not just here, but all over the world and, and recruit leaders. I mean, the British recruited Hitler. That's declassified. Uh, in the mid-20s and took him from nowhere and funded the, the uh, National Socialists to make him their leader. And, and the Milner Group bragged, we're going to build this guy up and he's going to tear Europe up. And uh, then we're going to be able to come in and rebuild it and take it over. I mean, this is their long-term strategic thinking. And when you look at Obama and everything he's done, it's clear uh, this guy is a total betrayer of everything he claims to be. Well, you remember last November when old man Bush... Um uh, H.W. 41 and Jeff Bush paid what was called a courtesy call to the White House. We were not even told what that was about, a courtesy call. That's all we were told. Well, you know, you've got the guy who the, the CIA headquarters is named after and his uh, the son visiting Obama. And uh, it's just, oh, we were in town. We thought we'd stop by. Uh, look, that doesn't happen at the White House. I mean, uh, those Salahis aside, uh, you don't get into the White House unless you have a reason to be there. So, I mean, obviously you're saying their plan was to have a controlled asset who was supposedly African-American in there. That's clear. But how is their plan going? I mean, did they mean for him to be a messianic leader and be successful? And has their uh, attempted launch of this uh, African-American Napoleon failed? Or did they plan to just use him as a distraction and then destroy him? Giving them everything they want. Look, uh, Operation Iraqi Freedom is now Operation New Dawn. I mean, right out of George Orwell's Newspeak lexicon, we're, we're shown pictures of convoys leaving Iraq. 50,000 troops are going to stay, and we're going to see an increase in contractors. What's that all about? By the way, I have the New York Times today on that. They say, oh, private contractors and intelligence operatives will now run the government. So this is a practice run for the U.S. and other countries where they don't just stage coups, they come in and put in their entire apparatus through these giant armored embassies and control everything and just have plainclothes death squads running the nation. Well, that's right. And, and look what Obama, right after he comes in, he, you know, he allows the CIA to overthrow President Zelaya in Honduras. He wants to build seven military bases in Colombia, and the Constitutional Court of Colombia just shot that down. So, you know, what Obama wants to do is now being shot down by the court in Colombia. I mean, this guy is owned lock, stock, and barrel by, by these intelligence, you know, the intelligence community, because he's not said no to them ever. I mean, Patriot Act, still in effect. Uh, we have an uh, uh, increase in uh, electronic surveillance. We got these deals between the CIA and Google 
and and and, and NSA and Google and, and Microsoft and everything else. And so he's he's allowing he he ran on openness. Uh, the Freedom of Information Act is still uh, not being implemented. It's still backlog. Requests are not being honored. Um, so I mean, everything he ran on, he has lied. Uh, on very fundamental constitutional issues. And we were told that he taught constitutional law at the University of Chicago Law School. I don't know what, which law he was teaching because when you look at his actions, it looks like he's teaching the Constitution of North Korea, not of the United States of America. You know, I laugh, but it isn't funny. This is really happening. And, I mean, this is really the private offshore corporate takeover of society. They're setting up... They're fusion centers run by the CIA in every major city. They're federalizing the police. They're training U.S. SWAT teams in Iraq for cordon, for shutting down cities, for gun confiscations. At the G20 in Pittsburgh, uh, my employee got arrested, Rob Dew. He, he saw people being let off trucks with bags on their heads. The Army would then, when they had to go to the bathroom, to follow them and then make fun of them. And, and, and this was all encouraged, like something right out of 1984, and this, they had private snatch and grab teams in front of news cameras on purpose, grabbing activists, putting bags on their heads. Now it happened in Toronto. Same thing in England. They are globally deploying a scientifically developed corporate oppression, a corporate black op tyranny. And, uh, I mean, clearly this is the complete shadow takeover, and now it's out in the open. I mean, this is so illegal, Wayne. Well, let me say another thing about Obama. You know, he's, he has had scheduled two trips to visit Indonesia. Both trips have been postponed. Um, you know, I think he, he, he knows that when he arrives in Jakarta, the, the, the Indonesian press, uh, some foreign press, will start looking at his uh, time there. And I don't think they want that kind of attention on that. And I think that's one reason. Now, he's always said he's had other priorities. I think the oil spill was one reason. Well, no, that's another made. issue, Wayne. You keep bringing up great points. It's, it's admitted he was in Indonesia longer than he said. Then he lied about being in the Muslim school. It's fine if he's a Muslim, but why lie about it? I mean, everything he's ever told us is a lie. You went over that earlier. I mean, when the parents met, when the grandparents met, when all this happened, we learn it's all a fiction. Well, and the other thing I discovered is when they were, uh, before they went to Hawaii, they were in Mercer, Iowa, Seattle, in the state of Washington. And and uh, I did find uh, in a list of these uh, agents, the CIA people, uh, the name of the uh, chief engineer for uh, Boeing. And he was, his area of primary assignment was Mercer Island. Now, uh, Madeline Dunham worked for the Boeing Corporation during World War II in Wichita, Kansas. So, it's, he's the only guy listed with the agency in Mercer Island. You know, we've got to figure the time frame here. Um, you know, uh, you know, you could conspiracy or coincidence, but I, I think that's much more than a coincidence. But we know his father's involved in all these secretive activities. Now Obama's involved with Odinga having the Muslims riot to create the prime ministership for him. I mean, just everything Obama does is dastardly everything he does is skullduggery laced and uh, it, it's just at every turn and then there's the secrecy and so i think you've conclusively proven that uh, the media has been involved in a cover-up of this guy's true history and everything we know about barry sataro is a complete stinking lie final segment straight ahead with wayne madsen wayne madsen report.com our site's gcnlive.com